I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California. This is the next installment of my LED mapping tutorial series for Resolume. And today we're going to talk about Slice Transform. Slice Transform is an effect inside Resolume that allows you to send your content to specific slices or parts of your LED screen. This is a super helpful tool and I'm gonna show you a few ways that we can use it. So let's hop inside Resolume and see how we do it. All right, so inside Resolume here, I have created a little sample screen layout that's gonna show us a few different scenarios and how we might use Slice Transform to map this. I'll provide you with a little pixel map for this stage design down in the description below uh, so you can follow along with me. All right, so you can see we have our main wall in the center here and it's kind of a widescreen format. We also have a DJ booth, pretty common, kind of a small skinny screen down at the bottom here. And then we just have two tall screens on either side, which might be iMag screens or, uh, you know, some some stages just have vertical formatted screens. So we're going to see how that works with Slice Transform. The output map for this demonstration doesn't really matter, but if you'd like to learn uh, the full basics of setting up your mapping uh, from scratch, go check out part one of this series here. All right, sweet. So we've got some content playing and one thing that slice transform is useful for is actually to let you see your input map in your preview window or in your composition monitor so let's see how we do that first of all we're going to search in effects for slice transform this is the effect we're talking about. We can just drag this onto our composition. Now, nothing happens. Uh, and that's because we need to add some slices to tell Slice Transform which slices it's going to use. To do that, you probably don't have this tab open. So we're going to go View, Show Slices. That's going to open another tab over here on the right uh, that has our screens and all the slices contained within them. Awesome. So what we can do, we can just click and grab all of those and drag them in to the slices area. And you can see right off the bat, this is actually duplicated all of our content into every screen, which is kind of the end goal. Uh, so that's cool. But for now, we're gonna get into stuff like that. What I like to do on the composition level is just set this to mask mode instead of fill. Mask mode is going to use the slices as a mask. So now we can see exactly what's going to our slices uh, and we kind of have a nice visual of our stage design there so that's cool i love using it for that so as we kind of saw when i was setting that up slice transform can be used to send content to each of the different slices and kind of duplicate and center it in each one of those areas. So that's really cool. Let's set that up again, and I'll show you another way that you can add Slice Transform to your content. All right, so let's go ahead and add Slice Transform to the layer. One cool thing is you don't actually have to add the effect and then add the slices in. You can just drag the slices onto the layer and it'll create a slice transform effect with those slices included. So that's really cool. And you can see here that on the fill mode, which is probably the most common mode you're going to use, 
What it's doing is sending a copy of our full content to each slice, centering it, and scaling to fill. So with our more horizontal slices, it's scaling until the left and right edges hit the side and we're getting some cropping off the top and bottom. And with our vertical slices, it's scaling it until the top and bottom hit the top and we're getting some cropping off of the left and right. Let's take a look at some of the other modes and features inside of the slice transform effect and see how they affect our content. Let's try the fit mode and you'll see the difference between fit and fill. When I hit fit, suddenly it is fitting the content within the slice instead of scaling it to fill the whole thing. So there's no cropping at all happening now. We could probably see this better in our advanced output. So now you can see our content is fit within each of the slices. So it scales it up just until it touches the, the top and bottom of our kind of wide horizontal slices. And we're actually left with some space on the left and right. And the opposite is true with our verticals. Our entire piece of content is fit within the slice so that the left and right edges are touching, but there's some space left over here. Now this is probably not ideal for full frame content like this, but we'll find some use cases for it in a little bit. A third mode that we have is stretch. Oh yeah, just uh, do me a favor and just don't use this one. That's it, that's all you need to know. No, but in, in seriousness, what stretch is doing is obviously stretching our content in order to have the same aspect ratio as uh, each of our slices. And like I said, this is never useful. So forget that it exists. And as we went over previously, mask is not going to transform our content at all. It's just going to use the slices as a mask and uh, make the rest of the area transparent. So we only see the parts where our slices are. All right, let's choose another piece of content and try to explain some of these other options. Down next to the slices, you will see a bunch of different buttons. The X will delete the slice from the list. So now our main wall is gone, and to add it in, we can just drag it back into the list. The S stands for solo, so if we click that, it turns off all of the slices except for that one. Uh, but you can see they're all still in the list. You can only solo one at a time. B stands for bypass. Has the opposite effect. It will turn off that slice, but leave the others visible, and it remains in the list. You can bypass multiple. These little icons here are the Pac-Mans. Pac-Mans are used for flipping content. And uh, yeah, you can see the direction that the Pac-Man is facing. This is normal. The next one here is a horizontal flip. So now our stage left and stage right are mirrored. Mm -hmm. 
The next one is a vertical flip. So we can flip the DJ booth upside down. And the last one flips both vertically and horizontally. It's kind of like a 180 degree rotation as well. If you have any questions or comments about anything we're doing so far, drop those in the comments below and I will try to help you out. So those are kind of the basic functionalities of Slice Transform. Let's look at a couple of ways we can use this to solve some common problems that you might have uh, with your show. One problem that we might need to solve is putting a camera feed into each of our iMag screens on the side. Let's drag our camera capture in and uh, let's see how we can do this. So as I mentioned before, we can go to our slices, grab these two, and drag them onto our layer. Now when we play, we have our iMag in both sides here. Another problem that we might want to solve is placing logos in different areas of our screens. Let's check out how we can do that. All right, I'm gonna to go to our sources, get a little text, make ourselves a sweet, sweet logo. Look at that. It's probably gonna be a bit larger. If we were to play this clip, obviously this is not what we're looking for. We want to place it in uh, some of our screens, but maybe we don't want to place it in all of them. And maybe we want a few different variations. So what we can do, we can actually make a few different copies of our text and we can place different slices on each of these instead of putting it on our layer. So we could put it on the verticals and you can see here that we're getting that cropping. So maybe this isn't, uh, this isn't what we want. So we can just hit it with fit down here and now our logo fits inside of those vertical screens. Maybe this one is gonna be our DJ booth. So we can drag it on there. And that one does pretty well, but if it's a little too large, we can actually use the transform before slice transform. I'm just kinda of scale it down. And maybe this one is gonna be our main wall. So we'll repeat the steps. We have our main wall. And we can scale that up or down as needed. Sweet, so that's how to use Slice Transform to solve a couple of common problems like placing logos on specific areas of your stage or routing camera feeds to iMags. The next thing we're gonna look at is how we can use Slice Transform in a more creative way to modify our content and create some new different looks for our wall. So with this stage design, we have a really wide wall as our main wall. Wouldn't it be cool if we could actually repeat content within the wall uh, so that one, there isn't as much cropping, and two, we can create some unique kind of mirrored and you know three up or four up looks. Let's take a look at how we might do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create some new slices. Let's make a new slice, 
and we're just going to make it half the size of uh, our main wall, which is 1280 by 640. I'm going to call this half one. Duplicate that. We have half two. Let's make a few more. Uh, maybe we'll do thirds and maybe even quarters. So our main wall is 2560 by 640. So let's try thirds create a new slice. We'll do 2560 divided by 3 by 640. Call this third one. We'll duplicate that. Duplicate it again. We'll just snap these into position. Yeah, let's stop there for now. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, just turn these off. So you don't really need these to be seen. Uh, we just want them for transformation purposes. So we could save and close that. You can see now those have appeared inside of our list here. And now we can go ahead and let's go over here. Let's actually make a new layer. Put it above, and I'm going to bypass our slice transform for now. Let's add these as an effects clip. Set the layer to alpha. All right, cool. So now we have this as an effect over top of our content. Any content that we play is affected by this. You can rename that as fill all. Now let's bring in our two halves instead of our main wall on another clip. We'll call this one double main. If we click that, you could see that our main wall has been doubled. And if we wanted to, we could even go over here and um, mirror. So now our main wall is always symmetrical. Kind of a cool look. We could even do that with our iMags too and get a full kind of symmetrical, repeated look. Let's make another one. Where we have that, but we add our thirds instead. We'll rename this triple main. 
So now we have a few different looks that we can switch between during the show to create some variation and, uh, and to use content in different ways. All right, so now you know how to use Slice Transform on your composition to see how your stage looks, on layers, groups, and clips, and even as an effect clip in order to create different looks and route your content to specific areas of your screen. And you can use this to solve common problems you'll run into as a VJ, such as placing logos on specific areas of the screen, or for routing iMag to iMag screens on the sides of a stage. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.